But go to Facebook, follow Brandon now, and every day at 9.05, we go live. Oh I'm, I'm live over you here. You looked confused. You were like... <laughs> <laughs> Where do I look? Well, that was your thing. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm back. Wow. Okay. Hold on. Where's your mask? You didn't miss me? I got my mask. It's right here. I didn't... Where's my mask? I don't have my mask. Wow. So we're going to talk about we masks missed today. We you yesterday, by the way. It took her a while to think of that, didn't it? I don't know. But we, uh, we're going to talk about masks today because yes. it's the first day retail stores are open here in Ohio, generally speaking. Uh, and a lot of them are going to require masks. You going to put yours on? Let's yeah. see yours. No, so this isn't it. When I'm in a bind, I'll wear this. I it's my mask. hair thing, exactly. Here's my, I got to take my glasses off, put it on, though. Watch this. So. Sarah and I ordered these because this is the kind she wanted. This is pretty much the only way I convinced my wife to wear a mask. Really? So you put it, you like it? No. I go like this. And you sit down here. And then uh, when you're ready to mask it up, you just go like this. See? Oh. I got my mask on. Well, that's cool. No, I don't. Now I look like you just can't see my neck. It's camo. Can I see just my neck's it? gone? Hello. My neck is gone. <laughs> Where did it go? My issue with that one is Here if I'm go. wearing my hair big and curly, it would mess with my do. So, so you're more concerned about your hair than your neighbor? No, so no, no. So I wear the one that's like <laughs> this. I would have been like, baby, I'm not messing my hair up. So uh, that is the question of the day. As we were looking at a couple different articles. Let me get them. first one is since retail stores are open back up people are not happy that some retailers are require, requiring wearing masks people want to boycott Costco over the mandatory mask policy Sarah and I yesterday we don't like wearing masks Sarah hates it we both got our new masks we had to go to Menards because we had a little project we're doing and I hassled her she put it on we walk in the front door and there's a sign and someone guarding the little turnstile in Menards yeah you're not going in there without a mask. Seriously? So they're just doing just like, are most stores doing that? They're, no, not Costco's most. Costco's doing it. So you said but Menards. The governor said that retailers have a right to refuse service if people yeah. don't wear masks. But you got a whole lot of people wearing masks and a percentage still not wearing masks. Yeah. And so what we're trying to figure out, because I, I didn't wear one for a while. And then Ron convicted me. So you want to read the email? Uh, or you want to just summarize let me give you it? The you summary can summarize. Of it. Yeah. I was standing in line for Cinco de Mayo yesterday, uh, last week, losing my mind because people just can't figure out their life or life at all. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why the line was so long. I thought people were waiting in line to make an order. So I started asking people around me if they've already ordered. Because I had a call. I called in my order. Guy in front of me, yeah, yeah, he had his mask on. I wasn't wearing one. He had his mask on. He's like, yeah, I, I called ahead. People in front of them, in front of this couple, turns around and they go, oh, we're hoping to get a table. And the guy and I look at each other. I'm like, you're not going to get a table here. You're not going to get a table in Ohio. No one can get a table. And they were like, oh, really? What? What? And they whispered and they left. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how do you not know this? I turn around to the lady behind me, and she's wearing one of those masks. I don't know how to demonstrate this, but let's just use this as an example. If this is right side up, because it's got the metal piece for your nose, she was wearing her mask like this, like sideways. And I think, and I'm thinking to myself, what is it? You can't figure out how to put this mask on. How are we gonna? You gonna protect anybody from COVID nineteen yeah. if you can't even figure out how to put your mask on? So he shared that with all of us, like all of us. The next day, you were frustrated, right? Yeah. And then Ron wrote me a note that basically said, "I noticed you said you weren't wearing a mask, even though I know you have one, because I gave you one." Uh oh. Can you tell me why it is? Is it arrogance, vanity, ignorance? Like, what's your reason for not wearing one when the governor has recommended in the C CDC that for the health of others, we all wear a mask when we go to retailers and buildings, right? Yeah. And Ron convicted me with his gentle nudge and I can find lots of reasons biblically why I should wear a mask. Yeah. For love of neighbor, concern for neighbor. I'm an ambassador for Christ, and I want to physically show people that when the governor asks me to do something for my neighbor, I'm complying 
It doesn't violate my beliefs. I can't find any compelling reason other than a disability of some sort, like you're claustrophobic, you have autism. I can't find any biblical reason to not wear a mask for and normal health. And we asked adults. for an hour and a half. And the closest we got was to not live in fear because we've had the, um, illnesses and pathogens throughout history. But I've never once worn a mask because I'm scared. It's not why I'm asked to wear a mask. But do you realize where they're, they're saying we're all running around like, oh, I'm going to get COVID, I'm going to get COVID. No, that's like, not what I'm doing at all. That, that's not what the concept is. Somebody might be doing that, but they're wrong. Because the purpose of the mask, according to the CDC and the governor, is to prevent carriers <coughs> who don't know they have it from spreading it to others. <coughs> but they can say, then you have the fear of spreading. We're afraid of this virus. So and don't, it's going to yeah. spread. And so, so don't be afraid. Put your mask on. <coughs> well, that's the closest. So maybe somebody here can give us something. So first, I want to show Len. I mean, wow. I miss you, Len. My husband. I want to show Brian uh, Isaac's. You're going to like Isaac's I'm uh, my mask. Beard. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Yes. That is cool. <laughs> Isaac, you look awesome. I wear that <laughs> mask cool. anytime. Um, Troy says, I drop Bernard's cause because of price jack. So <laughs> Menard's. <laughs> is it Bernard's? You've heard of that before? People call it Bernard's? I, I don't know. Christina, hola, como esta? She says, hola a todos. Hello to everyone. I look crazy stupid on. <clears throat> Elena says, I agree to wear them if you need <laughs> them. So Elena says, if you need them. If if you're not around people, then don't. Well, for well, me, I may not like it, but I love living more. Yeah, so she yeah. agrees with the mask. Listen, I hate wearing this thing. I look stupid. I feel <clears throat> stupid. I, I don't want to wear it. But it's not about me. It's about my neighbor. She agrees with it, and she mentioned not wearing it around people. We didn't address this, and you said you were going to. Some people we were talking about how we're irritated when people when we see people driving with their mask on because we're like you're not around people why are you wearing your mask yeah, I, we I got a couple that. of texts explaining and brian you kind of understood where they were coming from can you kind of explain so now that ron has convicted <coughs> me and i've realized my apathy about a mask was wrong and my christian convictions i believe should compel me to wear one i was at it yesterday i went to a grocery store to pick up <coughs> uh some coffee we needed at, at the house put my mask on. I get back in the van and I realize the next stop on my trip is like two blocks away. Yeah. And I'm trying to decide, is it worth even taking off the mask? So basically, and it wasn't this one, it was one that goes around the ears, oh, the surgical yeah. one or whatever. I was like, should I just leave this on? And then I went, oh. That's why. That's why people Did you repent? Well, I mean, I was, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> no. You really answered. Sheila says, be respectful of others and put your mask on. It's a similar concept of getting vaccines to help protect those who can't. Sheila brought up vaccines. I didn't. We don't need to talk about vaccines at all. Please don't bring up vaccines. Yeah, let's stay with the masks, please. Lisa Anderson is here. That's Lisa? right. That's because of me. What's up, my girl? You think it's because of you? I'm going to go say hi to Lisa. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> What's up? Callie, hey girl, she says, we'll continue to wear mine if it's required. I want to protect people who I love. Marcy, hey, welcome Sandy. Sandy's following us, Brian. Several people have Yay. decided to follow us. Sandy Armstrong, Chris, good morning, Chris, Did and you many others. Marcy said? Marcy said, Brian, that mask looks tight. I would not be able to breathe in that tight. Let me tell you, let me put it back on. It's a jersey knit. I can breathe in this better than I can breathe in the mask that goes around my ears. Oh, really? I got no trouble breathing right now. I feel great. Awesome. See? My question is, is it really blocking stuff? Probably not. Yeah. Well, then... But that's not why I'm wearing it. Blocking stuff from going out. Yeah, it's blocking <laughs> stuff from going out. Miss Anita says, wearing a mask is the loving, Christ-like thing to do. If Jesus could, could wear human skin for the first time in all eternity, if our Savior will always wear the nail prints in his hands and sides, surely it is a small thing to to do, to wear masks for those around you. Gary, following, not stalking. Gary? That's, your, that's you your friend. Carissa, that's what I'm saying. Car Carissa Colon. Man, you got an accent in your last name. I want an accent in my name, but it didn't work out. I love your name, Carissa. 
welcome. Robert says, we can be so vain, selfish, spoiled, and insecure. Hashtag guilty. Wow, look at the yeah. humility, Brian. Why are I always picking on you? Yeah, he said we, so I guess he's including himself <laughs> on that. Holly, no, but he said he's guilty. Holly, hey, good morning, Holly. And she's a nurse for 26 years. She says, I am used to wearing a simple surgical mask when I care for someone who is immune compromised or when assisting with a procedure. It's about protecting the other person. I'm having trouble understanding why someone healthy who could be an asymptomatic asymptomatic carrier would choose not to wear a face covering when going to a store. I'm surprised how many of my Christian friends are using the quote, my body, my choice argument. Oh, oh. And for those of you not familiar, my body, my choice is the rallying call for those who love abortion. Oh. Don't tell me what to do with my oh. body. Oh. And a Christian should be hard pressed to reconsider that as an argument for not wearing a mask. Lest you be called oh, to do that when it comes to abortion. Oh, my goodness. Great point. And Holly, uh, this is my thing, too, because I got to admit, and this is what Ron called me out on. I was all worried about these people in line for Mexican food last week. About one wearing her mask wrong, somebody else. I wasn't wearing a mask. Ron convicted me of that. And I couldn't come up with a reason biblically where I could say, I don't need to wear one right now. Like... Why didn't I wear one that day? Let me psychoanalyze that. Yeah. The mask that I had was in our van. Two masks, both in the van. I was in the, our Jeep. I didn't want to turn around and go back home, even though it was like a five-minute drive. I thought to myself, this isn't a, I, I'm not sick. I'm fine. And the, But then as I re-examined those justifications, I remember the reasoning is not about me anyway doesn't matter if I feel fine, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So I changed my conviction, and now as much as I hate it, I'm wearing a mask. Lynn says, excuse me, but it depends on which medical expert you listen to as to whether um, any mask other than the N95 will stop you from infecting others and vice versa. Okay, so Lynn, but here's my question for you and others, Lynn. The governor of the state of Ohio has been placed in, in, in his position, according to the Bible, in Romans 13, by God. And the CDC is also in a position of governing authority. And they've asked you, they've requested you strongly that you wear a mask. Why, in the scriptures, are you given permission to not do it? Like, what in the scriptures compel you to that? I don't, I'm not talking about doctors, this or that. The governor of Ohio has been appointed by the Lord, according to Romans 13. He's asking you to do it. Why Why biblically are you saying no? That's my question. For me, I can't come up with a reason to say no biblically. I can come up with a lot of reasons to say yes. Just me. So Montina says, I don't really understand why there's such a big deal about wearing a face mask. Can you just, it's short, can you explain that? It depends on what she means. It's just saying, is it a big deal to wear one? What's the big deal? Put one on, or why do we need to wear one? So two different answers. I, I oh yes, that's in terms true. of the first one, I agree with you. What's the big deal? Put a stupid mask on. Get yeah. on with your life. It's just people have been asked to do crazy things by governments mm -hmm. that run contrary to conscience. Mm -hmm. Putting a mask on is not one of them. Yeah, and we're not even supposed to be out that much, so it's really not um, as much as we think. So, since you're the history buff, um, somebody said typhoid Mary. That's why you wear one, even if you don't feel sick. Do you remember that? I've heard of it, but don't remember. I don't remember that one. Doug says, even if the N95 is not adequate, the N95 is designed for certain particulates. It is not a self-contained canister mask. Yeah, but again, it's better than nothing. I don't know. I mean... Derek says, it kind of makes it seem like I am wearing my mask. I'm a good Christian. Look at all those sinners not wear masks. No, the, I, and it might sound like that. And if that's what, I, what it sounds like, is it Derek? Yeah. That's not what I'm trying to communicate, and I apologize. It's not what I'm trying to communicate. What I'm saying is that each individual Christian needs to do a self-examination. This is what I did. I wasn't wearing one. Ron talked to me about it, asked me to defend my position biblically, and I couldn't do it. So I changed my position because my conscience is captive to the Word of God. doesn't make me a better Christian than you. I'm saying I'd love to hear someone show me 
because I hate this thing. Show me where the scriptures would tell me that if the governor asks me to wear a mask, I can say no. Ooh. Lisa's here. Uh, First Lady Dee Dee Tanks is here. Miss Tanks? Doug said, oh no, I already told you what Doug says. Uh, Deborah, well said, I had trouble coming up with the right word. She was talking to Gary, who said, I don't get the following not stalking. Can you explain your, uh, the following not stalking, Gary? Um, Mike says, so you believe the CDC and DeWine, their recommendations don't match the data. To what long-term end will the mask help, except around the older medically compromised folks? Do you go with the vaccine side or the herd immunity side? Uh, Mike, it's better for my gas mileage if I go 55. D didn't science for a long time prove that that's the best, the ideal speed for gas mileage conservation at high speeds? Okay. Um, I'm not going 55. I think in this case, I don't see a compelling reason when the governor asks me to do something to refuse it. And when he says only around the elderly and compromised people, how do I know? I'm like don't grabbing know. milk and bread. I'm not looking around. Having a compromised immune system is not a visible disability. At all. Most of the time. Lynn says, I think there's a big difference between mandates and or law and requests. That's my point. Show me the scriptures that says I should obey requests. Well, then show me one where it says you shouldn't. God's placed the governor, and he tried to require it, realized that it was a step too far, and strongly recommended it to the point that retailers are given the authority to refuse it. Why would, why do you want to refuse it? Like, Hello. this is not hard. Watch this. My rights are still intact. I, I don't feel, I don't look good, yeah. but I'm making it. Deborah says there could be a negative consequence to wearing the mask. You heard about the children doing a running exercise. We're wearing masks. Two, three fell over, dying. Couldn't breathe well enough. They shouldn't wear a mask when exercising. I know. And I haven't seen, I have not seen people wear a mask. Where, like, we're not supposed to do that. You're outside. I've seen people wear a mask outside when they're with another person, which probably the what person probably doesn't home? live with them. Yeah. Elizabeth, good morning. She says it should be optional. Those who need it, wear it. Those who are uncomfortable and can't wear it, don't simply. Just that. Um, but, okay, but the concept of why we're supposed to wear masks hasn't, doesn't have anything to do with those who need it. By the way, Lynn is saying she's not against wearing it. She's just saying kind of think through it, which I get. Sure. Uh, but the mask is not about you. I don't know how else to say it. The mask is not about you. Yeah. What we're being asked to do, because so many people carry the virus without, without symptoms, being asymptomatic, that we spread it without knowing. So it's not about you. You feel fine. You're not immunocompromised. You could spread to someone who doesn't. So they say, love your neighbor by just doing this. Love your neighbor. Let's do this. Love your neighbor. It's not about you. It's about your neighbor. That's and if right. this is a way to show I love my neighbor, why wouldn't I do this? I'm not being asked to kill someone, punch anyone, deny God. I'm not being asked to not go to church. I'm not being asked. I mean... Carissa Colon, our new, uh, she's a new follower of Brian and Janelle, says, what do you think about the doctors that are saying constantly wearing a mask can actually lower our immune system because healthy people need to be exposed to the outside world in order to keep our immune systems up? Uh, what I would say is that I very rarely wear this mask because I don't go out that often. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah. I was without a mask yesterday for probably 23 hours and 45 minutes of my day. 15 minutes in and out of stores, I had a mask on. I don't think that is going to have a tangible impact on my health. Yeah. Mike says, from the web discussion, so being devil's advocate, since the study in New York showed that 66% of the positive or hospital COVID cases were caused indoors at home. If that's the case, and only 4%, I think, were from stores, then to protect your family. Shouldn't everyone wear one at home? I don't know. I'm not being asked to, Mike. I, I don't know what to tell you. Cause, and I love you, brother, but that's not what this is about. The governor and the CDC have asked us when we go to retailers and we go to stores and we go to public places that are in closed spaces that we put a mask on. Oh, We're out of concern for others. I'm going to surprise you. Somebody is in here and they just commented. But first, I wanted to show you. Look, Patricia's talking to me. Look. 
She sat talking to me. She loves she me. She said, I love you. I love you, Patricia. It's Patricia, though. Uh, Myron Davis is here. Oh, yeah. Myron Davis. Wow. Walkworthy Men's Conference, worship leader. Awesome. Love you, man. Good to see you. He says, that's a cool mask, Brian. I would wear one like that. Where can I find one? You think it's cool? I mean, I feel like I disappear. <laughs> you could, I, I don't know. Uh, my Dude, my wife found it on Amazon. Len was wondering, could he wear, you know, those snow masks? With just his eyes. I was like, dude. <laughs> no, because yeah. that has a hole for your nose and mouth. Oh. But no, so it's just like a really stretchy material, real thin. She found it on Amazon. I, I wish I knew. My wife is amazing, Myron, and I don't know where she does all this stuff. I just look, show up and look good in my mask. So Montina says uh, exactly why I refuse it. People, why refuse it? People can make up a ton, a ton of reasons why they shouldn't. The point is, like you said, you don't know who has it or who may be compromised. So why not just put it on as a barrier? Yeah. Like, why Why is this a hill to die on? I mean, if somebody asks me to deny Jesus, I am going to stand on that hill and die. If somebody asks, says, Brian, you are not allowed to worship Jesus Christ, I'm saying, no, I know what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this such a big deal? So we have a person commenting for the first, well, I haven't seen him a lot. Doug, first let's visit Doug. Oh. We're going to your Facebook page. Doug Scott. Oh, well, is that, look. Wait a wrestlers. Minute. Are you a wrestler? Let's see. Wait a minute. Did you meet famous wrestlers, Doug? And he works, he's a technician for Goodyear. Len's grandpa worked for Goodyear for decades. So that means you are awesome, Doug. So Doug says, um, I agree with an earlier post that said they thought we should not be wording this argument as a Christian response to wear or not wear as it places an opinion or judgment on who is behaving as a proper Christian. The pushback against wearing a mask is a symptom of expression of government overreach, overreach, especially considering the opposing data by medical experts on both sides of the issue. I know exactly where you're coming from, Doug, and here's my answer to that, because I'm a guy who loves the Constitution. I taught social studies, for goodness sake, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, as a Christian, here's my Bible. I don't just put this on Sunday. I don't just put this during my quiet time. This is the lens through which I, I view everything in life. Like, what do I need to know about every decision I make in life? I need to run it through the, 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 the matrix of Scripture, so to speak, or the lens of Scripture. And so I believe in every situation, I, I can't say, well, this isn't a Christian issue. This is an issue of government overreach. No, everything is a Christian issue. And I have to see if it passed this test first. And then I can view it through the lens of government and everything else. And this, to me, is one of the major problems in our country today, is that Christians have done the opposite. What we've done is we've compartmentalized this. We either put it where we want, or we put our political ideology in front of it. We can't. The Bible first. And in this case, I don't see a compelling biblical reason to not just put a mask on. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Myron Davis, he like, oh, he's so cool. He says, hey, fam, it's great to hear you discussing this. A lot of churches are trying to decide how to proceed. Should we mandate mask wearing in order to congregate? What are your thoughts? That is an excellent question. What would you do in your church? You've been part of an elder board. Are you about to start telling people you can't come to church if you don't have a mask on? I think a reasonable case could be made that until a vaccine is available, that we ought to wear masks. I don't like it. I don't like so it at all. So church. Yeah. But this is the other thing. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean that that's a good reason to object to something, right? Do you want more uh, people disagreeing? I got, I got one for you that I put. Sure. So Mike says the death count is way exaggerated. The actual number of deaths from the virus is small and typically older compromised folks. So different than the flu deaths every year. Mike, so I love you. So why don't on, we wear... I love okay. you, Mike. I love you. Answer this question. The governor of Ohio asks you to wear a mask. Why are you not going to do that? You can, you can keep sharing the medical data. That's fine. The governor of Ohio, appointed by God, is asking you to wear a mask. Why aren't you going to wear it? This is what Ron did to me. And he changed me on this. I don't want to hear anything more about research and medical, this, this and that. You cannot avoid the idea that the governor of Ohio has asked you to wear a mask. 
Okay, so Angela says, can the church provide masks for those who don't have one? Yeah, why not? I thought about that. I just always have a heart for small churches that may not have the money. I know people, like my husband, the place he works for, you get a free mask a mask every day. That's a corporation. To put that on a church, though, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a um, lot. Marcy says, maybe as Christians, we need to set an example as loving our neighbor. Uh, That's what I'm trying no, to say. No, no, wait. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, what I'm ahead. saying is we keep saying that. But there are some people that are commenting and saying, why are we making this about being a good Christian or not? Like, the holier than thou. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying, um, it's not a mandate. It's not a law. Some people okay. are like, yo, why are we making this about categorizing Christians? It's simple logic. Simple logic. The governor and the CDC has said, we're carriers, not knowing it. So we should wear a mask to protect our neighbor. Okay? What message are you sending then if you don't wear one? That you're listening to some, somebody no. else. No, here's the message you're sending. That you don't care about your neighbor because that's why you've been asked to do it. That's the message you send. When the governor asks you to do something out of love for neighbor and you don't do it, the message that whether you like it or not, you're sending. Some people will receive that as you don't care about your neighbor. And is that a message you're comfortable sending as a Christian? When I was confronted by that by Ron, as he confronted me on not wearing a mask, I was left speechless. Well, what can I do? Except say, I want to be one known as loving my neighbor. This is not infringing on my, my rights to freely exercise my faith. All I have to do is go like this, and I can communicate love to my neighbor. This is actually the lowest hanging fruit loving my neighbor I've ever been asked to do. Honestly, I don't know why you just took a picture of me. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. But I understand that some people are like, no, fine. If you want to use your platform and be like, I'm listening to the doctors, they're listening to doctors too, and they're not agreeing. But they're not. I'm just but trying they, to voice I get it. Their but thing. the doctor's not the governor. And the governor's in authority over you. And Romans 13 indicates the governor's been placed in authority over you by God. Okay. And so you can't go, I ignore the governor and Bob Doctor, I'm going to follow him instead. No, you have to deal with the idea of the governor asking you to do something and your lack of compliance with it. Violet shared, until this conversation happened, I didn't give this much thought, so thank you. And as much, and she visits uh, overtime, so she, we love you, Violet. She says, and as much as it makes me feel like a bandit, I'll be wearing it for fear of tripping up unbelievers who watch how we react. Do we just rebel against any random government mandates or do we rebel against mandates that hinder our worship and restrict our freedom of religion? This this does neither. So I guess you changed my mind. No, and it's not me. And can you quote the scripture that is all about Brian and Janelle? Like, that's what you just did with Violet. What? Uh, uh, Romans 12.2. Yeah. Like, and you did that with Ron. Yeah, you Ron, know, I, this, with, Ron yes. did this to me. Yes. I didn't change your mind, Ron, but thank Ron. And it is Romans 12, too. Yeah. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. If I don't change the way I think sometimes, yeah. God hasn't transformed me. Change the way you think. So for those who disagree, we're not saying, well, just change your mind because somebody has an opinion. But we've talked about Philippians 2. We talked about, you know, honoring government. It's not obey government, it's honoring. So, like, our governor, based on his leadership, you know, unless he's violating your freedom of religion, that's where, where you're saying about changing the way you think. Because some people can listen to that and be like, well, just because they disagree with you, you should change your mind. But he used scripture. That's what Ron was talking about. Doug, oh, go ahead. You yeah, I just, something. it's, to be real, to love my neighbor, to like, let's say they get sick and I have to pay for that medical care. That's a big cost to me. If my neighbor needs love by having me make a meal, there's a cost there. It's time. It's money. Uh, if my neighbor meet, needs their lawn, it takes time. How much cost is there to this? Get ready. Time it. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. It's inconvenient. It's uncomfortable for some people. I'm just trying to... But, like, of all the ways to love your neighbor, has anyone ever asked you to do something easier than this? All right. Like, I've been told, essentially, by the governor, when he talks about the reason for this, that I can show love to neighbor by going like this. That's not hard. 
Why would I deny an opportunity to love my neighbor? We gotta go. Y'all. Anything else worth saying before we yes. go? Yes, let me see. Um, nice point you're getting across, Brian, following the book of life. Some, there was a, uh, here. So Matthew said, along the lines of your talking point, Brian, if the governor asked everyone to get in cattle cars to go to virus protection camps because it's safer, would you do it? Where does it end in terms of like, oh, you're laughing. <laughs> no, well, I yeah, mean, yeah. no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, and that is so tangibly different than this. I don't know what to tell you. Being rounded up in a cattle car like the Holocaust and this are two totally different things. I, I just, I don't see the comparison at all. Yeah. I love you, though. We love you guys. We got to go, though. And lots of comments. If you look below us, you'll find the article that we've been referring to. More than 100 comments since like 8, p 8, 8 o'clock. I'm sorry. So join the discussion. And then, you know, we got Follow Friday. So we'll... I love going back and reading your comments. I answer to some of you guys, and then we'll pick our favorites on both sides and get back to it on Friday. All right, peeps. Love you. Appreciate the great discussion.